Time for another soccer down here, 1v1, and it's time to catch up with the crew. And what I mean by that is it's a different spelling, K-R-E-W-E. Louisiana crew joining USL League 2 out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Hanging out with us, it's the head coach, Joan Oliva, and master of all trades crew, it's Wade Wallace. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us for a 1v1. Hey, thanks for having us. Actually, it's a 2v1, so I, I've got I've to I've work on my dribbling skills here. So, all right, so what we'll do, guys, for the next little while is kind of get into the discussion about USL League 2 and the franchise and the footprint and what soccer means to, to Lafayette and all this kind of stuff. But So I can determine an order as to who's going to be answering the questions first. Uh, Coach, I yeah. have a number between 1 and 10. Give me a number between 1 and 10. Seven. Right on. So coach gets it right out of the block. So that means that coach has won the toss and you can either answer first or second since you guessed the right number. So do you want to answer the questions first or do you want to follow up with what Wade has to say? I'll take the first. All I right. like to have the ball, so I'll take the initiative. All right. So, uh, so coach has won the toss and he has elected to receive. So <laughs> let's just go ahead and start it up. So coach, let, let's get into USL League Two a little bit, and why USL League Two? That's a good question because we have been like researching on the last two years as we started what was the best pathway for our players and our city to be there, and we actually feel like USL Two right now is what feels the best uh, for different perspective, but basically for the pathway that they can provide to the players. We uh, we thought that we have a lot of talent, young talent in Louisiana. And we want to put them on the right league. Uh, at the same time, I feel like regional, it makes sense. Uh, at the end of the day, we are a lower club, so we cannot expect to be traveling to the East Coast, to the West Coast in every weekend. So for the conference, for the philosophy, and also because I feel like on the last two years, we can say that USL is making some progress on the system. We really felt like it's the, the right decision to go. So Wade, for those that don't know a lot about crew, Give, give the, the birth of the franchise and what it's like to get through your terrible twos and head into your threes. What, what, is, what is Louisiana Crew for those that have not seen you play? Well, uh, I guess you could summarize Louisiana Crew is a, a collection of players. We have local players. We have uh, international players. Um, really, the aspect of the sport in Lafayette, Louisiana, I moved here about 20 years ago, and uh, – it has grown tremendously, right? So when we started talking about putting this club together, we were seeing a lot of talented players. I think there were two or three Herman Trophy winners that came out of Louisiana over the last 10 years or so. And what we were seeing is a lot of, a lot of talented players that uh, maybe were not being recruited to top college programs. Um, we wanted to have an outlet for those players to play at a higher level rather than just a, a typical beer league, an adult league. And so that's kind of how we started. Uh, uh, Coach Joan, um, of course, was was a big part of that. And uh, and Kevin Mooney, also our, one of our executive directors, was a big part of that. But um, Really, I mean, like I say, the, the sport has, has grown tremendously in not only Lafayette, Louisiana, but Louisiana as a state. And we just wanna, we wanna give those players, uh, you know, an opportunity to, to compete at the highest level, you know? So coach, when you look at how the franchise has grown since birth to now, what's it been like to see this process get to where we're having these interviews and these two-on-ones discussing USL League 2? What's it been like to see the growth? It has been a really good journey because when we started, it was kind of like, let's see who can play first. Let's see where we can play second, right? Uh, we went to the GCPL. Like I think Jonathan Render and, and all the league has been doing a phenomenal job. We, we went in with 18 teams, so the soccer here has been growing on that aspect. But obviously, um, I think after the first season, the way we played, the, the, the way we were successful on the field, it makes a lot of players on the surrounding teams the feeling that they want to come to us. So we ended up having like an all-star GCPL West League. That was our team. On that moment, we qualified for the US Open Cup. So after beating the three rounds, that was the second hype. Uh, obviously, we know what happened with the COVID and everything was canceled on that or US Open Cup. That was a bit frustrating for the club. Then we tried to participate on the NISA and we tried to do everything. So every time we have the opportunity to go out and play, we go. And that's what our players love. 
they, they love, they, they, they share that passion of soccer. And I think these players are making the team successful on the field. What happened is like, we ended up going with a, with a great brand. Now we have like, I don't know, like more than 2000 followers on different platforms like Instagram. And then you go to the other platforms and you see the team is growing. We bought more jerseys than ever. So we got that feeling like we, now we are on that hype and we don't want to let it go. Wade, how much of a challenge was it to have this franchise continue to be a franchise in whatever aspect you want to discuss, whether it's business, community, what have you? How much of a challenge was it to have crew be crew over the last year and a half? Uh, it's definitely been a learning experience. I remember, you know, when we first started out, it was one of those things to, uh, you know, it was kind of scary, right? You want to launch this club and you have all these plans and you're like, uh, you're thinking, you know, how, how can we do this successfully? And I would just say, if you, if you have any plans to do, you know, make a similar project of what we have with crew, just go for it. You know, we took the jump and we didn't know, like coach uh, Joan talked about, we didn't know exactly what kind of team we were going to put together, how we were going to be able to compete. Uh, then you, you struggle with financing the club, sponsorship, merchandising, uh, then just game day preparation. Um, we've just kind of, We've kind of, uh, you know, it's been a, a, an interesting adventure, but we always seem to come up with the answers. And we've got a lot of, a lot of great supporters and, and the community supports the club. And we couldn't do any of this without, you know, all of the, the, uh, the, the, the community and, and the people that donate their time to help out everything from game day preparation to, uh, like I say, our, our sponsors around the city. So it's, it's been a challenge, but it's, it's been very rewarding. And coach, you're going into the Mid-South, and I would maintain that in the Central Conference, it is one of the toughest divisions out there because you've got Brazos Valley, you've got Corpus Christi, you've got Houston FC, you've got Little Rock Rangers, you've got Mississippi Bria, Round Rock, and Texas United. You're really diving in head first into a very, very tough division in USL League 2. Yeah, and also I think that we are looking forward to it. But I felt like we have been doing really well on the field. I really trust the players that we have. I think we cope every single moment, bad moment on the games. And we, we did it with, with really, you know, with some good scores or, or got some results. Uh, also, the challenge for us is on the field. I feel like we are building a, a good club. And as Wade just mentioned, with community, people who donate times and also money or, they, or their branding, the restaurants that give us food. So that's <laughs> a way to help us. Uh, and at the same time, I think like the players need that. And I think like to keep growing, we need to get a little bit out of the comfort zone. So if we don't go to that conflict zone where the better teams are. We never know what, where we're going to go. But, but I feel really comfortable with the players and the team that we're going to put together for to play that game. Yeah. And, and we did get a little taste uh, during U.S. Open Cup, as Coach Joan mentioned earlier, we did get a little taste of competing against, you know, clubs from whether they be USL or uh, you know, just different organizations. So, um, so we've had a little taste of that. So Wade, I know that 2022 and the 2022 season is going to be here before we know it, because I mean, we're getting toward the end of 2021. You guys have made the announcement and it will get here before any of us really realize that that calendar is going to turn somewhere. And, and I know that this probably is different for Coach Joan and for you and for Kevin and, and everybody else there at Crew, we all have our different ways to write down what we need to do to get something done. I mean, for me, it could be on my phone where I, you know I pull the stylus out and sit there and I'll write something down and I can have it as a document and it stays there. You know, it could be on a it could be on a legal pad that I have on my desk, could be on one of those refrigerator magnet dry erase boards that's on my fridge, you know, where you sit there and you have an idea at two 30 in the morning, you sit there and as you're getting your, you know, you're getting your big cup of water and you're like, Oh, that, and then you write it down and you go back upstairs and you go to bed. Or it could be, as I'm looking at the two of you, it could be on a rather large four by six foot dry erase board that could be hanging from a wall. That's got a bunch of different lists on it. Where is that to do list? And what do you think the next thing that can be crossed off of it is? Uh, interesting question. Um, when I think of the to-do list, I mean, obviously we want to compete on the field, right? Um, I, I think of compete. Uh, I think of represent the community, you know, definitely represent Louisiana. You know, this is 
like I say, when I moved here, it was kind of a, a soccer wilderness. Things have changed. Um, we've got big things going on here with, with the sport now in Louisiana and also entertain. I mean, we want to play entertaining soccer, right? We want, we want to entertain our fans. Um, I think coach Joan and the style of play that, that he, you know, really exhibits with the, with the club is, is very entertaining. And I think anybody that comes to our matches would be, you know, a little bit taken aback and surprised at the, the level of play. So, um, those are kind of just top of mind to do. Um, and then, you know, once one, uh, another thing is we, we'd love to, you know, welcome anybody who wants to be a, a supporter of crew. You know, we want to move outside of our, our regional area. We, we've heard from people, I mean, heck around the world, believe it or not <laughs> with, the, yeah. with crew. So I think that's also on the to-do list for sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll add, if I can, yeah. I will add to, we want to make this soccer culture bigger and more rich here. I think this is a really football and baseball state. Uh, and the fact that we are bringing these is the international players that they go, they help the little kids doing camps or, or, or there is fines. We need to find the different ways like they interact together. But I feel like bringing all the youth soccer to a soccer game like is played by pre professional teams. And, and have like we did this summer, no more than three games with 500 people there, uh, music, tacos, enjoying the games. That's what we want. Uh, to leave soccer at field, not just on the TV, because we know how branding is in the US. And, and one of the aspects that we need to do is to start bringing that culture, like go out, support your local club, enjoy just a soccer game in life. I think that's also part of what, what we need to do. We need to do it better. We want to keep doing it. And hopefully in two, three years, we'll be able to do it more than three or four months a year, right? The, the idea will be doing 10 months. And to do that, also, we need to grow as a club. Well, because, Coach, at the same time, I know that you're looking for a specific kind of, not just a specific kind of player that will mm -hmm. fit your style that you want to have as the on-the-field presentation there for Crew. But I know that you're also looking for a specific kind of individual that can represent Crew well out in the community and be a part of the growth of it in that aspect. It's not just a one-dimensional thing anymore. They have to, to be in tune with what you guys want to do on the field and off as you're growing in this important step. Correct. You couldn't say better. I mean, it's not about having the best players. It's to have the best players for our project. And we have the 80% of the players are already here. The 80% is a mix of local talent plus international guys that they finished college and now they are uh, in the UL at Lafayette or maybe they are just coaching little ones. And the other 20% is going to be for those players, like maybe they are in different colleges around Louisiana that they want to keep playing. But, but as you mentioned, we want the best players for our team. And if they don't understand what a lower, what pre-professional club is in the U.S., uh, they get it wrong. If they expect him to have here like 80 people on the staff um, tying their shoes, they're mm -hmm. wrong. All right. They need to come. I remember the, the final that we played GCPL. It was a really rainy day, so the field was really plenty of water. Mm -hmm. And before the warm-up, all our players went out and, and yeah. they drained the field right. with the benches, right. pushing. Right. Like, you know, that, that's where we are. Yeah. You finish the game and you see all our players going with the stands, shaking hands with the little ones, give them the jerseys or, or little presents that we have for them. And that's part where we, where we are right now. And if we have the proper people, it's, it is impossible to go, right. to go really far with them. And, and we've been really lucky because uh, the players that are, are currently here with the club, uh, they kind of embrace that community involvement. They enjoy it. They like interacting with the kids, with the families. And so, I'd say uh, we have a lot of the, the right players here at the moment, and I'm sure there'll be some some new players coming in also, and we hope that they embrace that same feeling of community involvement, you know. Yeah, you got, you got into that a little bit for me, Wade, but I want to ask about Lafayette and the footprint on the whole. What are folks going to expect to see what what's the anticipation for someone who parachutes in let's just say right, there's right. a there's a flight that's uh you know at thirty thousand feet someone opens the side door they strap on a parachute they parachute down they sit there they wave at billy napier on the way to your game right, right what are they parachuting into for someone who has never been into the lafayette louisiana slash louisiana crew experience right right well 
I mean, just to think about some people that have come from outside and attended some of the matches, I think the first thing is, wow, you know, the atmosphere, it's a, it's a wonderful atmosphere. We get good crowds. We have uh, music. I mean, we've got, you know, banners, smoke, we've got food. Uh, we have, you know, at halftime entertainment featuring most of the local kids that come to the game, they get to participate. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a real good family friendly atmosphere, but at the same time, uh, I think we're developing a pretty fierce, uh, fan base at the same time. So, um, I don't know if I could compare us to another, another club, but I would just say that, um, that it's definitely growing in the community. And when you come out, you're going to have a good time. You're going to see good soccer. It's going to be exciting and it's going to be, you know, family friendly and, um, I think that uh, you're going to get some good Cajun food probably at the same time. I was going to ask about the tailgating experience and how different it's going to be. But uh, coach, let me ask you this. When you look at the season being seven months away, and that's just games that count, not training camp or anything like that. What are some of the the more wilder responses that you've gotten on emails internationally? Because you mentioned international, it's like what kind what kind of emails are you getting here? What are some of these addresses that are tapping on your door and sitting there going, "Hey, what's going on there in Lafayette?" Yeah, that's good. Actually, before we go internationally, if I'm not wrong, you are down in Atlanta, right? Yeah, we have a guy from Atlanta that's going to fly just to come to one of our games. <laughs> I'm still in Nokia because he has been a big supporter of all our teams. And he said, hey, I saw the field is really close to the airport. I'm going to just come down. That's what I'm doing <laughs> in my free time now. He's like, okay, that's huge. We also have, um, I mean, our jerseys, the Icarus company. I'm sure you are not. They are really cool guys. They, they have really good products. And they have been selling our jerseys all over. So we have people from Italy, from, from England, um, <laughs> getting our jerseys. So we send them stickers. We also have people like follow one of our players. A couple of players we have playing, we, we have Kwesi Weston, our striker, has been playing professionally in Turkey. Alfie, who plays in Barcelona, plays also for us in the summer. And, and we get emails from these people like, hey, I want to meet these guys. And, and because we are kind of accessible, we, are, we don't have Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. So we don't have five fi different filters. And, and we are really playing people. So we get the matches to the players, you know. Uh, we invite some players to the, to the locker room. What I'm trying to explain with that is like, we are more than open to, you know, to, to make relations or build up relations with any single club or fan or whoever just wants to show some interest. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, I had an, I had an email conversation not long ago with uh, a gentleman over in England and he had managed to get his hands on a Louisiana crew Jersey and said, wow, this is a really great Jersey. It's very unique. It's probably the most unique Jersey I have in my collection. I want to, I want to find out more about the club. And so that was really neat to just explain to him about the area and the history of the club, even though it's a short history, but, um, <laughs> but uh, it was just great. And it's a real kick to, to know that people, you know, in other parts of the world uh, kind of know a little bit about Louisiana crew. You know? All right. So Wade, let me ask you this. What are some of those next things that need to be uh, attacked, whether it's on the field or off, as we're getting through the winter time, because I know that just because no one's playing doesn't mean that there isn't anything going on for a double negative. But right. honestly, what are some of those next things that you guys are looking to do over the next couple of months before you get into bringing players in, getting to training camp, and getting to matches that count? Just, just solidifying that that support. You know, we're always looking for you know businesses or organizations or individuals that want to get involved with the club, and because we're stepping up into USL2, um, you know, we're going to need help, right, from the community, and and we're going to need new supporters. We're going to need uh, to grow that. We're going to need you know new sponsorship. We 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 welcome uh, any potential sponsors to join up with the crew, and so. Really, that's, you know, before speaking of bringing players in, and that's Coach Joan's uh, little uh, mm -hmm. section there that I won't speak to. But, um, but yeah, just solidifying the organization as far as support really going forward. Yeah. With the players, we are going to practice a couple of times during this break. We also will play a scrimmage with the Poles at Crescent City in New Orleans. That's during the winter. Then we have the first tryouts at the end of January. Uh, February, we will start with our two practices a week just to get them used. And, and then with the four or five new players that they will come from different colleges uh, in May, we're just going to roll over the season. All right. So I'll go ahead and ask. 
When it comes to concessions and tailgating, what should someone expect? What has been there in the past? What, what's the food layout? What's the menu that folks should be anticipating when they come into to a crew match? Well, I mean, coming into Cajun country, you're going to definitely have some Cajun fare. So, you know, you're probably going to come in. There might be some boudin, which is, of course, a, a Cajun sausage that's very popular. There's definitely going to be probably some jambalaya or some gumbo. Um, yep. I, th- I don't know if we've done crawfish, but we've definitely done gumbo and jambalaya. Yep. Um, on the other hand, you're also going to get some unbelievable, uh, more Hispanic foods. You're going to, you know, we've had some, some, uh, what was a taco tacos, vendor? Yeah, uh, some yeah. Excellent tacos. <laughs> I was a huge fan of. Um, so there's a lot of good food, and you never know, you know, who, who you know, you never know what someone's going to bring in. And usually, when they bring food in, and like you're talking about tailgating, you know, people tend to share, right? So there's something. Uh, uh, one thing about Lafayette, Louisiana, is a lot of things revolve around food, you know. Um, and so <laughs> there's definitely going to be a lot of choices if you come to a match. Okay, blatant promo time for those that want to follow along and keep up with the progress that's going on with crew guys. How do they do it? I mean, the first thing maybe is to follow us at our social media is LA Crew FC. If you just follow Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and LA Crew FC, you will find the most updated information. And at LFC, so LACrewFC.com, you have the website where they can go uh, and see the schedule, they can see the store, they can meet the team in pictures, and they, uh, they have uh, maybe a little bit more of further information on the team. Well, guys, it has been great to catch up with you. And as someone who knows someone who is a graduate of now the University of Louisiana, there's only one university in Louisiana, and it's the University of Louisiana. That's what they say up north. Guys, Louisiana crew now joining USL League 2. Head coach Juan Oliva, Wade Wallace. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us here for a soccer down here. 2v1. Hopefully you guys have taken advantage of that two-on-one situation and gotten it past me. But uh, thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on what's going on with crew there in in, uh, Lafayette all season long. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much.